What's up, fam? It's me. I'm back. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's being smart. I hope everybody is on code and staying on code. For those of you who are not on code, uh, hurry up and get on code. It's of the utmost importance. Okay? So, um, and I hope everybody uh, watched the last video that I posted where I talk about my experience with mental um, illness uh, slash gender dysphoria. Um, so get on that because we, we will be talking about that as well. Um, not my particular video, but we will be talking about the, the, this whole uh, um, alphabet agenda thing that's going on. We'll be talking about that more in depth um, in a couple of more videos, okay? But let's go ahead on and let's get into this one because I'm not trying to be here all night. And I know y'all ain't trying to be here all night, so let's go ahead on and let's get into this one, okay? Now, this broadcast is about, um, you know, we are demanding reparations. We're not asking. We're demanding reparations, right? We're demanding reparations not only for slavery, but for all the public policies, all the government policies, all the policies that have come, all the damage that has been done to the foundation of black American community, uh, the descendants of the chattel slaves in America. We are demanding reparations for all the things that, that, that have happened to us since, because of and since slavery. That includes redlining, Jim Crow, uh, uh, the slave codes, the black codes, uh, um, discrimination in housing, uh, discrimination with the GI Bill, uh, all of this stuff. Mass incarceration, own up to us, police brutality, uh, 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 us not being treated equally and fairly in the uh, in the judicial system, all of that. That's what reparations is for. Reparations is for all of that, right? Reparations is not meant to be a remedy for racism or a or, or, or remedy for white supremacy. No, uh, reparations is simply a debt that is owed to us. A debt that is owed to us for all the labor that our ancestors put in to build this country. They were never paid for their labor. They were never paid uh, because their land was stolen, their generational wealth, their op the opportunity to make generational wealth was stolen. You know, we need reparations for all the, the, the hundreds of black towns that were destroyed by white supremacy. Tulsa, Rosewood, uh, Wilmington, and, 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 and uh, Seneca Village, which is now Central Park. So this is what reparations is all about. But along with reparations and other tangibles, we are also asking for and demanding a foundational black American hate crimes bill. Because the stats just came out a couple of, uh, about a week ago, and we are still leading everybody else in victims of hate crimes. Black Americans still lead every other group, every other ethnic group in victims as victims of hate crimes so the jews got there uh yeah the jews actually got in a, in a um in an executive order the jews actually got some protection of course lgbg lgt lgbtq got their protection the asians got their protection um and we're still waiting on our protection Foundation of Black Americans, Black Americans in the United States. Yes, we are demanding a hate crimes bill, okay? Well, Sheila Jackson Lee, the same representative from Texas, the Democratic representative from Texas, who is actually, I think she's either of Haitian or Jamaican descent, so she's an immigrant, um, who came up with that HR 40 mess, that nothing burger, that's just talking about studying reparations and studying the effects of slavery and all of this kind of stuff. So we know that H.R. 40 is nothing but a study. H.R. 40 is not, and I repeat, H.R. 40 is not reparations. It's not, it's not reparations in any way, form, or shape. It's a nothing burger. It's empty. They're talking about studying. You understand what I'm saying? There's no time frame. There's no deadline. There's nothing in the HR 40 that says, okay, well, we'll study for a year. And then, and then once they study, then they'll bring forth recommendations. 
So HR 40 is nothing. Well, Sheila Jackson Lee has decided that she was going to break out with another nothing. And you got white folks and, 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 and other folks all over Twitter and all over social media just all upset talking about this HR 61. That's what it is, HR 61. If you are, watch, if you are uh, watching the playback, of course, the link to this, um, to the text of this bill is in the description box so you can read along with it with me. Because we can ready to read the whole bill, okay? And they just all upset talking about because white folks are being targeted and all of that because, you know, not all uh, folks in the dominant society, not everybody, but the majority of the dominant society wants to act like white supremacy is something that we came up with. Something that black Americans came up with. Like it's our turn. Like it's a figment of our imagination. Like it just doesn't exist. No, white supremacy is a term that white folk came up with. You got presidents that talked about white supremacy. You got all kinds of, uh, 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 of white folks in the government that have talked about white supremacy. White supremacy is real. If you go through my channel, you'll see early on in my channel, I actually did a video where Christopher Ray, who was uh, uh, the director of the FBI at the time, talked about white supremacy being uh, the biggest threat to the United States national security. So don't let these folks running around here talking about white supremacy don't exist and trying to act like white supremacy is, is something that we made up, something that we came up with. No, the, the dominant society came up with white supremacy. That's what they call it. That's not our word, it's theirs. Okay? So... Uh, uh, and, and they just all upset and just all up in an uproar and all of this kind of stuff about this 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 new this new bill that Sheila Jackson Lee has introduced um, in the House Judiciary. Okay, but we're gonna read this bill and we're gonna break it down. And I urge because the reason why I know about it and I decided to read about it is because um, African diaspora. Phil Scott broke it down. He read the whole bill. And I was like, yeah, that's what we need. You know, Jason does that. Jason Black does that. Just breaks down whole bills and just reads all the uh, all the fine print and everything. Well, that's what we need to do with this HR 61. That's the name of it. HR 6, House Resolution 61. And everybody with any kind of platform, I don't care how big, I don't care how small. You need to break this down. You need to read it. And, and, and leave the link in your description box so that your people can read it with you. Your followers, your subscribers can read it with you. So that's exactly what we get ready to do now. Um, it's um, congress.gov HR 61 Leading Against White Supremacy Act of 2023. So it's the Laws Act L-A-W-S Laws. It's the Laws Act of 2023. Leading Against White Supremacy Act of 2023. Right? The 118th Congress between 2023 and 2024. Representative uh, Sheila Jackson Lee from Texas introduced this on January the 9th, 2023. Okay? So we get ready to read the text of this. Uh, shown here, introduced in House. 01-09-2023, 18th Congress, first session. H, and you see it in big bold letters, HR 61. House Resolution 61. That's what HR means. House Resolution 61. She introduced it in the House. Same way she introduced um HR 40. The, the study reparations bill, because it ain't had it ain't got nothing to do with real reparations. Okay? HR 61. To prevent and prosecute white supremacy inspired hate crime and conspiracy to commit white supremacy inspired hate crime and to amend Title 18 United States Code to expand the scope of hate crimes. So they want to amend Title 18 of the United States Code to expand the scope of hate crimes. So let's go over here and see what uh, 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 Title 18 of the U.S. Code says. Hold on, y'all. 
Title 18 U.S. Code. Title 18 of the United States Code is the main criminal code of the federal government of the United States of America. The title deals with federal crimes and criminal procedures. So because she doesn't give the specific section, we can't go to the specific section that talks about the scope of hate crimes. Okay? But she's talking about amending this Title 18 to expand the scope of hate crimes. Right? To make it bigger, to make it wider, to, uh, to make it, I guess, more inclusive or whatever. Right? Okay, let's, let, let's go back to where we was at. To our text. Okay. In the House of Representatives, January 9th, 2023, Miss Miss Jackson Lee introducing the following bill, which was referred to the committee on the ju on the judiciary. A bill to prevent and prosecute white supremacy inspired hate crime and conspiracy to commit white supremacy inspired hate crime and to amend Title 18 United States Code to expand the scope of the hate crimes. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled. Section 1, short title. This act may be cited as the Leading Against White Supremacy Act of 2023. Section 2, white supremacy inspired hate crime. So now we're going to get into it, right? Okay, now, this is, we'll get there, hold on. I gotta, I gotta look up something right quick. Hold on, y'all. I'm still here. I'm looking for something. I'm looking for something in particular. Oh, yeah. It was done in the LA Times. We're going to talk about this, too. Okay. I just wanted to find it. I just wanted to make sure that I had it up here so we could talk about it when the time comes. Okay, so let's keep moving. Section 2, we back to the bill, H.R. 61. Section 2, white supremacy inspired hate crime. Okay? A, in general, a person engages in a white supremacy inspired hate crime when white supremacy ideology has motivated the planning, development, preparation, or perpetuation, or perpetration, excuse me, of actions that constitute a crime or were undertaken in furtherance of activity that, if effectuated, would have constituted a crime. Right? Now, she mentions here white supremacy ideology. Right? And white supremacy ideology is that white folk, the dominant society, are superior. They are supreme um, to all other groups, to all other ethnic groups, to all other races, they are the superior supreme race, right? They are supreme, they are better than, they are inherently higher than, inherently supreme and superior to all non-white folks, right? Especially black folks. That's the white supremacy ideology, right? Like I said, if you look on my channel, I did a whole video 
uh, uh, giving the definition of, of, of white supremacy, explaining what it was, explaining how it operates, the whole nine yard. Because Neely Fuller Jr. told us that if you don't understand white supremacy, everything else around you is going to confuse you. So you have to understand white supremacy in order for all this other stuff that's going on around you to make sense. Okay? So this is saying that any person that engages in a white supremacy inspired hate crime when white supremacy ideology has motivated the planning, the development, preparation, or, or, or perpetration of those actions and it constitutes a crime or if, if they had been able to get away with it and affect it like they wanted to, it would have, cost, it would have constituted a crime, right? Um, the shooting at uh, Mother at, at Mother Emanuel's church in South Carolina, uh, the Buffalo shooting. You understand what I'm saying? Those were all crimes that were perpetrated because of the white supremacy ideology, and we know that because of the manifestos that these individuals left behind. Right? Okay. Let's move on. That was A. Let's move on to B. Conspiracy. A conspiracy to engage in white supremacy inspired hate crime shall be determined to exist. One, between two or more persons engaged in the planning, development, preparation, or perpetration of a white supremacy inspired hate crime, or between two or more persons, at least one of whom engaged in the planning, development, pre preparation, or perpetration of a white supremacy inspired hate crime, and B, at least one of whom published material advancing white supremacy, white supremacy ideology, antagonism based on replacement theory, or hate speech that vilifies or is otherwise directed against any, any non-white person or group and such published material. Okay, right there, we're running into a problem. And the reason why we're running into a problem is because now she's running into freedom of speech. If you want to promote or publish material that advances white supremacy, that's your right. Unless in that material, you're actually telling people to go out and kill or go out and target a specific group of people. But if you just want to publish uh, material that promotes, you understand what I'm saying, or that spreads the, the white supremacy ideology, freedom of speech covers that. If you want to publish material talking about replacement theory, you can do that. Even hate speech is covered to a certain extent under freedom of speech. As long as you ain't telling nobody to go out and kill somebody. As long as you ain't telling nobody to go out and specifically uh, 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 target a specific group of people. So she's running into a problem right there. Because just like Brother Phil stated in his video, and I'll have that linked in the description box as well, so y'all go listen to what he had to say when he read this. Now you, you now you're talking about uh, encroaching on people's rights. Now you, you you know now you're getting into this dictator, a uh, 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 tyrannical, authoritative type of stuff right here, because you're trying to step all over freedom of speech. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is, you notice she slipped in there, any non-white person or group. So this ain't for us. This ain't for Foundation of Black Americans. Understand, this is not what we demanded. This is not what we told them we wanted. This is not it. This ain't it, Sheila. This ain't it. So this covers Hispanics, Asian Americans, who already have their own separate uh, uh, hate crimes bill. This covers everybody and their mama. 
Anybody that can say that they are a minority, that they are non-white, this covers them. And it doesn't cover all the people that practice white supremacy. White folks are not the only people that practice white supremacy. White people are not the only people that believe in white supremacy. You understand what I'm saying? White people are not the only people that are anti-black and participate in anti-black rhetoric and anti-black activities and anti-black hatred and produce anti-black propaganda. White folks ain't the only ones to do that. Some of these same non-white folks that you're talking about protecting in this bill have committed hate crimes against black folks. They are at least, if nothing else, they are at least white supremacists or white supremacy sympathizers. They are at least honorary white folks and they like to try to practice white supremacy as well. So listen, black folk, this ain't for us. So don't let this fool you. Don't let Sheila Jackson Lee and the Democrats try to fool you into believing that they're doing something for you. That they're giving you what you demanded. This is not an anti-black hate crime bill. That's not what this is. This is a mess. That's what this is. Okay? Now, let's go on. Uh, uh, under the B, it says, uh, I, uh, well, one, in the little Roman thing, was published on a social media platform or by other means of publication with the likelihood that it would be viewed by persons who are predisposed to engaging in any action in furtherance of a white supremacy inspired hate crime or who are susceptible to being encouraged to engage in actions in furtherance of a white supremacy inspired hate crime. So basically, what, what, what she's saying is they have to, in order, in, in order for it to fall under this bill, they have to actually prove that whoever publishes this stuff knew that they were publishing it to people that would act on it. Basically, that's what it's saying. They knew that they were publishing it to people, to a group of people that would act on it. But again, that's real, real close to you messing with folks' freedom of speech. And at the end of the day, the person who published it can always say, well, I didn't tell nobody that they needed to go out and target anybody. I didn't tell anybody that they needed to go out and kill folks or harm folks or commit some kind of crime against folks. So again, this is a bunch of bull. Okay, let's get to number two. Could, as determined by a reasonable, a reasonable person, motivate actions by a person predisposed to engaging in a white supremacy inspired hate crime or by a person who is susceptible to being encouraged to engage in actions relating to a white supremacy inspired hate crime. But again, you got to prove that this person acted based on what they were reading. You got to be able to prove that. You got to be able to prove that this person, first of all, was predisposed. And this person already had uh, uh, thoughts of committing some kind of crime against non-white folk or, or something like that. First, you got to be able to prove that. Then you got to be able to prove that it was this actual thing that they read that was published that made them go out and do what they were doing. But y'all ain't got to, y'all ain't, we ain't got to the kicker yet. Hold on. Now, number three. 
was read, heard, or viewed by a person who engaged in the planning, development, preparation, and perpetration of a white supremacist inspired hate count. Now you might be able to prove, prove number three. Because now you got proof that this person read it, they heard it, they viewed it, and then they started engaging in the planning and the development, you understand what I'm saying, and the preparation and the actual perpetration of this hate crime because of white supremacy, because of the white supremacy rhetoric that they read. But herein lies the problem. With this whole thing about white supremacy, you understand what I'm saying? And not and about her not being specific about certain things and about her doing this mess with this any non-white person or group. I'm going uh, uh, and, and this uh, and this article will be linked in the description box. This is from the uh, Los Angeles Times. It's a column. White supremacy comes in all colors. 2023 will make this impossible to ignore. White supremacy comes in all colors. And this person actually goes on to say that Kanye West, Herschel Walker, and Kyrie Irving are white supremacists. And this article was written by Erica D. Smith and Anita Chabria. And these two women actually said that Kanye West, Herschel Walker, and Kyrie Irving, three black men, as far as I know, foundational black men. Now, I might be wrong about Kanye. But as far as I know, foundational black men. This article goes on to call them white supremacists. Then they called Larry Elder in this article, they called Larry Elder a black man, black face of white supremacy. So when you got folk now trying to call black people white supremacists, what does that tell you about this bill? This bill is very dangerous. Because now, instead of it putting us, black folks, foundation of black Americans, you understand what I'm saying? In the group of those who are protected, it puts us foundational black Americans into the group that's actually perpetrating white supremacy. Because we got folk running out here trying to say that black men are actually white supremacists. And I will admit, black people can be white supremacists apologize, uh, 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 apologists they can support white supremacy. They can promote white supremacy. They can back white supremacy. You understand what I'm saying? But no black person can be a white supremacist. Why? We don't have the power. We don't have the power. You understand what I'm saying? We don't have the influence. We don't have that. We can push the white supremacy ideology, which means we ourselves believe that white people are better. Remember that old saying that they believe that white ice is colder than black ice? But we can't practice white supremacy. You understand what I'm saying? We can't be white supremacists. Why? Because the whole point of white supremacy is to be white. point of white supremacy is that white people or those classified as white you understand what I'm saying are superior they are supreme so how's a black person gonna be a white supremacist
Now, yes, a white Latino can be white supremacist. Why? They white. They classify themselves. You understand what I'm saying? As white. Yes, a white Asian can be white supremacist. Why? Because they classify themselves and they look at themselves as white. Yes, a white Arab can be a white supremacist. Why? Because they are white. That's their classification. But black folk ain't white. You can look at us and tell we ain't white. There's no way that you can mis there's no way that you can mistake us for white. So no, we cannot practice white supremacy. Like I said, we can believe in it. We can be crazy enough and dumb down enough. You understand what I'm saying? And dealing with enough of uh, 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 of what they call it, the syndrome. I can't think of the name of it right now. We can be, you know, we can be so screwed up until we believe in white supremacy and we promote it, we push it. You understand what I'm saying? We support it, but we cannot be white supremacists. But that's the narrative that they're trying to push now in articles like this one from the Los Angeles Times. And yes, we can be black faces of white supremacy. They try to make us the black face of deviancy. They try to make us the black face of violence. They try to make us the black face of, of, of the 19. They have tried to make us the black face of a whole lot of things. So yes, you can have black folks that are black, that are the black face of white supremacy, but they're not white supremacists. They can't be. Why? Because they're not white. They're not classified as white. In no time during history have, have black folks ever been classified as white. But that's what's so dangerous about this bill because there's nothing specific about it that talks about these white supremacist hate crimes that are being committed and perpetrated against black people. Remember, she said, any non-white person or group. Okay? So let's go on and get rid of and finish with this. C. Department of Justice Authority Enforcement Monitoring and Reporting. The department shall have authority to conduct operations and activities pursuant to this session specifically. So actually what they're getting ready to do is actually they're getting ready to set up and call us a bunch of white supremacists. And when you know anything, if they pass this thing, if they pass this leading, uh, 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 what do they call it again? Where's the name of it? Leading Against White Supremacy Act. If, if they pass this thing, the next thing you know, all of a sudden, all kind of black folks are going to be hit with charges under this thing. Because they're already trying to say that we can be white supremacists. When we can't be. Because we ain't white. White supremacy, the basis of white supremacy is because we're white, we're better. Because we're white, we're superior. Because we're white, we're supreme. Hold on a minute. I got to go check something right quick, y'all. Hold on just a minute. something. I had to go check. Make sure everything's straight around here. But yeah. Now, can black folks be used by white supremacy? Yes, of course. Can white, can, can, can black people push white supremacy talking points 
and, and, and push the white supremacy ideology? Yes. We got a name for them. We call them raccoons every day. Raccoons and 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 and, and liquor boots and 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 uh, and bosams and all of that every day. But we cannot be white supremacists. Now let's let let's hurry up and finish reading this because I want to move on to something else. One. Uh, let's go back. See, Department of Justice Authority Enforcement Monitoring and Reporting. The department should have authority to conduct operations and activities pursuant to this section specifically. With regard to information or evidence obtained by the department of any action cited in this section, the department shall have the authority to investigate, intercede, and undertake other actions that it deems necessary and appropriate to interdict, interdict, mitigate, or prevent such actions from culminating in violent activity. Two, the department the department shall have the authority to prosecute persons who engage in actions cited in this section. And three, the Uniform Crime Reporting Program in the Department of Justice shall remain shall maintain records of white supremacy inspired hate crimes and related actions cited in this section and enforcement actions in response thereto. The department shall provide annual reports to the appropriate committees in Congress that shall include information cited in this uh, 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 paragraph. Section 3, criminal offense. Section 249A1 of the Title 18 United States Code is amended. So this is the amending of the code that she was talking about. One, in the matter preceding subparagraph A by inserting after race, color, religion, or national origin of any person the following, or because of a white supremacy based motivation against any person. Against any person. Now I want y'all to remember something. This also covers white folk. I want y'all to remember that white supremacy when it decides to get violent White supremacy will also get violent with other white folk. Up here, in section B, on section two, she said, directed against any non-white person or group. But down here, when you get to talking about criminal offense, or because of a, of a white supremacy based motivation against any person, two in subparagraph B, A in clause one by striking or at the end. B in clause two by striking the period and inserting or and C by adding that. By adding at the end of the following, uh, uh, this is the, the, the little uh, threes. The offense was in furtherance of a white supremacy based motivation. Section 4, findings. Section 40, 4702 of the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act is amended by adding at the end of the following. 11. Mass shootings and other hate crimes motivated by white supremacy have been increasing in frequency and intensity. These heinous and violent, virulent crimes are inspired by conspiracy theories, blatant bigotry, and mythological falsehoods such as replacement theory. All instances must be prevented and severe criminal penalties must be applied to their perpetrators. So that's what that is. So don't think for one minute that this has anything to do with us. If anything, with all the rhetoric that they're trying, with all the propaganda and the rhetoric that they're trying to put out now, and folks putting out articles where they're trying to call, Lord, I done got rid of the article. Let me go back and get it. Uh, I made a mistake and got rid of the article. Yay. Kyrie and Herschel. And 
in a minute, y'all. I gotta find it. LA Times. LA Times. There we go. Yeah, when you got articles being put out like this, you understand what I'm saying? Basically calling uh, black men white supremacists. So this actually could do us, if this passes, this actually could do the black community more harm than good. But this ain't no, this this is not at all what y'all think. Just like HR 40 is not what they have put it out there to be. This is not at all what you would think it is. This has nothing to do with any kind of protection for foundational black Americans. For black Americans, period. So this is not it, Sheila. And we need to let Sheila know this ain't it. And we ain't going along for it. We're not falling for the bullshit. Because that's all this is. Okay? Now, let me see. Okay, I ain't got much longer. But I, I, I just wanted to read that. Like I said, the uh, 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 the text, will the, the actual bill will be in the description box uh, uh, along with... Um, this 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 article from the LA Times where they talking about white supremacy comes in all colors. Right. All that'll be down in the description box. But I want to move on from this because it brings it, it, it goes right into what I'm getting ready to talk about next. And I've already did a video on this, but it was time to do another one. It was time to do another video on this, right? Um, and it will explain, because there are a lot of uh, 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 younger people, a lot of new people that have come on the scene that are newly awakened. You understand what I'm saying? They're looking for information. They're looking for guidance. They're looking for understanding. You understand what I'm saying? They want, they, they, they want to understand what's really going on and all of this. So that's the reason why it's necessary for us sometimes to repeat ourselves. Right? So I'm going to repeat myself. And I'm going to repeat myself by talking about meritorious manumission. Okay? And for any of you that don't know what manu uh, 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 meritorious manumission is, uh, I'm going to go right into this and I'm going to explain what it is and I'm going to explain um, how it impacts what's going on and what Sheila Jackson Lee is all about. Because Jill, Sheila Jackson Lee is practicing meritorious manumission. Her and so many other black politicians, the black celebrities, uh, 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 the black folks in, in, in mainstream media and all of that. All of them are practicing a form of meritorious manumission. Okay? So let's, let, let's go here right quick. This comes from the Mogul Dome Nation. December 14, 2021, written by Ann Brown. It says, what is the Meritorious Manumission Act of 1710? How America developed a culture of snitching and pro-establishment Negro leadership. Now, this is what she said. The concept of Uncle Tom didn't just crop up out of thin air. Some point of the Meritorious Manumission Act, a law passed in Virginia back in the, in the 1700s, as the propellant, some point two, the Meritorious Manumission Act, a law passed in Virginia back in the 1700s, as the propellant that spurred black people to snitch on one another to get into the good graces of white folk. Under the laws, slaves could earn their freedom by performing good deeds that impressed their slave owners. Hold on, let me see what this is. Some black activists say this law not only caused black people to turn on one another, but ultimately resulted in the, cre it resulted in the creation of black politicians who played along with the establishment instead of disrupting it. And if you and, 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 and I'll I'll try to remember to put the link in the description box where Jason just talked about um, Dr. Martin Luther King, and he talked about how 
And even Dr. Martin Luther King said it himself in the letter to Bur in the letter from Birmingham, where he talked about uh, uh, nonviolence being a disruption. All the uh, all the nonviolent marches and all the nonviolent protests and all of that were a disruption to the system. They were disrupting the system. And, and, and you you see here where she talks about these politicians that will just go along with the system, with the establishment, instead of trying to disrupt the establishment. Some sources note that the laws was passed in 1710, while other documents about the history of the government of Virginia say it was passed in 1782. And that's exactly what they say, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Manumission is the formal process by which a slave owner can give his slaves their legal freedom. Slave owners use the promise of manumission to ensure their slaves' obedience and often rewarded fruitful servitude with manumission, according to Encyclopedia.com. So, since she cited Encyclopedia.com, we're going to Encyclopedia.com. And this is what Encyclopedia.com says about manumission, meritorious manumission. Manumission is defined as the formal process by which a slave owner can give his slaves their legal freedom. During the period of American slavery from the 1600s to 1865, it was one of the main avenues available for a slave to obtain his or her freedom. This legal or formal release from bondage was one of the most employed methods available to free African Americans within the American judicial system. Slave owners used the promise of manumission to ensure, to ensure their slaves' obedience and often rewarded fruitful servitude with manumission. Manumission evolved from a liberal legal interpretation to a process designed to remove freed African Americans from a slave owning society. Right? Now I'm not going to go into this whole, I'm not going to go into reading this whole entire article. I'm going to put it in the description box so that y'all can read it. Right? But there were certain things that a slave could do to get manumission, to get freed because of those good deeds. Right? Being a great entertainer. Being able to entertain Massa and them white folks on the plantation, right? Two, saving the life of a white person. You understand? Especially the life of somebody that was in the family of your master. Three, coming up with an invention that made your slave owner or made his plantation or whatever a whole lot of money and for snitching on somebody else snitching on other black slaves who were talking about an uprising you understand what I'm saying who were talking about escaping or whatever snitching now let's go back to the article from Mulder the U.S. was not the only slave society to use manumission. It has been used throughout history in regions of the world that held slaves. New York Assembly, Assemblyman Charles Barr wrote in the New York Amsterdam News on December 3, 2020, that the Meritorious Manumission Act developed a culture of snitching and pro-establishment Negro leadership. Barron has been a, com uh, a, com a community activist for more than 49 years and has represented the 16th district of the, of, of, of the New York Assembly since 2015. The Meritorious Manumission Act was the legal act of freeing an enslaved African for good deeds as defined by the national public policy. Freedom could be granted to an enslaved African who saved the life of a white a uh, racist colony, co uh, colonial enslaver, or his property invented something from which a white racist colonial enslaver could make a profit, or snitched on a fellow enslaved African who was planning 
a rebellion or an escape. Referring to the historic papers from the Virginia Assembly or General Assembly, uh, Encyclopedia of Virginia defines the Meritorious Manumission Act as being enacted by the General Assembly in May 1782. It allows slaveholders to manu to manumit their slaves at will without government approval. So now exactly when this act came down, whether it was 1710, 1710 might have just been when they said, okay, you can do it. But you got to have approval. 1718 might have been when they amended it and said, okay, you can do it. And now you don't have to do it with approval from the government. The law also mandates that anyone manumitting their slaves shall provide support for those over or under a certain age. And that slaves pay the taxes and levies required by the state. Let that sink in for me. Entertainment. Snitching. Saving the life of or the property of your slave owner. We got snitching, we got entertainment, we got saving the life of. And inventing. Those were the things that you could do to get freed from slavery through meritorious manumission. So Sheila Jackson Lee is being a good little what? Because she's come up with a bill that would actually criminalize us. <laughs> she has come up with a bill that based on the propaganda that they're trying to push now and based on the narrative that they put trying to push now, that we somehow, foundation of black Americans, black Americans, black folks, period, somehow or another can be white supremacists. She has come up with a bill that would actually, instead of protecting us, that would actually harm us and criminalize us. Why you think all of these uh, 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 entertainers and, and 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 all of these basketball players and 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 and, 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 and celebrity athletes and all that? Why do you think that they get some of the black backlash and all of that kind of stuff that they do when they decide that they're gonna go against the grain and when they decide that they're gonna go against massa and they're gonna speak out on this or they're gonna speak out on that or they're gonna do this thing this way or they're gonna do their thing that way? Why? Because of meritorious manumission. What did I just say? Just read to you. It just said, hold on. Let me read it again. Manumission is the formal process by which a slave owner can give his slaves their legal freedom. Slave owners used the promise of manumission to ensure their slaves' obedience and often rewarded fruitful servitude with manumission. Now, manumission was just one form of reward. Another form of reward might be you didn't have to work in the field. You can go live in the big house and be close to the master. You understand what I'm saying? Or you got better quarters. In the slave quarters, you got a, a, a place of your whole own that was better, it was furnished, it was warm. You understand what I'm saying? You got better clothes, you got better food than all the rest of the slaves. 
all of these things were a form of reward for you being a good slave and you being obedient to master and you telling master everything that's going on around you and you entertaining master but now as soon as you bucked against master as soon as you messed around and did something to disobey master or did something that master didn't want you to do or said something that master didn't want you to say or whatever you went right back to being just like all the other niggas on the plantation just like all the other slaves on the plantation white supremacy does not change it does not change white supremacy has operated the exact same way for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years it does not change the playbook does not change just like Nelly Fuller said if you don't understand white supremacy everything else is going to confuse you it's easy to understand because it does not change when you were a slave and in bonds, they could offer you your freedom and, and nothing else. They could offer you a freedom. Okay, if not your freedom, they could offer you better quarters. They could offer you better food. They could offer you a, 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 a better position in the, in the house clo uh, close to master. They could offer you certain things because you had nothing. But now that the chains, the physical chains have been removed, now they got to offer you a little bit of something different. But now they can offer you money. They can offer you fame. They can offer you fortune. But it still requires your abject obedience to white supremacy. Why? Because white supremacy does not change. And we need to understand that. You understand what I'm saying? The bed witch in slavery, the belly warmer, they call them bed witches, they call them belly warmers. You understand what I'm saying? As long as she was satisfying Massa and satisfying all the men that came in that Massa made her go have sex with, you understand what I'm saying? And she wasn't complaining and all of that. And she was satisfying them and keeping them uh, 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 satisfied or whatever the case may be. Okay, well now she can live in the big house. Now she can actually take baths. Now she can actually get her hair done, get her hair washed. She can wear nice dresses and all of that. Why? Because she was providing a service that Master wanted her to provide. The minute she said no, the minute she said, I don't want to do that. The minute she said, I'm tired of doing this. She went right back to being just like any other slave on the plantation. Well, now they can offer the bed winch, the belly warmer. They can offer her something a little bit different. Now they can offer her some money. They can offer her some fame. They can offer her platforms so she can speak. But the minute she says no, the minute she says, I don't want to do this anymore, she goes right back to being like any other slave. And all of those little manumissions, all of those rewards for being obedient and doing what you told, all of those rewards are snatched away. So you got to understand what you're seeing when you see these celebrities don't, don't want to say nothing. They, they don't want to speak up about black issues. They don't want to speak out about what's really going on and all of this kind of stuff. Why? Because they don't want to lose their manumissions. They don't want to lose their rewards for being good slaves, for being obedient slaves. They don't want to lose that opportunity that maybe just maybe one day Massa will free them from the plantation.
So they be quiet. They don't say nothing. They don't speak out. And if they speak out, they speak out supporting Massa and, and pushing Massa's agenda and supporting Massa's narrative of what's really going on instead of speaking the truth. They mess around and do something like Kanye or do something like Kyrie. You understand what I'm saying? And they get brought back down to being just a regular field nigga and they start getting whipped. They start getting whipped for being disobedient. They start getting whipped for going against the program. So understand. Sheila Jackson Lee was sent to try to fool you into believing that this HR 61 was somehow, some way, what we was demanding as far as our, our, our anti-black hate crime bill. She was sent to fool you into believing that the Democrats was looking out for you and the Democrats was looking or uh, uh, was listening to you. But no, this ain't nothing but a bunch of empty nothing. And at the end of the day, like I said, based on all of these narratives that they're trying to push, this would do us more harm than good. They will find a way to use this to target us instead of protecting us. So we got to say no to this. We can't buy into this bullshit. Because she's all about getting her manumissions. She all about getting her rewards, you understand what I'm saying, for being obedient to the powers that be. And the powers that be told her, okay, well, we need you to write us another bill. We need you to write something else to fool them folks so that they can get back on the plantation, so they can get back in line and get back to voting blue no matter who. So, like I said, all of this information, the text for the bill, this article from the Moldom Nation, the LA Times article where they trying to act like all of a sudden black men or, or, or black folks can actually be white supremacists, um, all of this information will be listed down in the description box. And I urge you to get down in that description box and I urge you to read this stuff and I urge you to go do some of your own research. You understand what I'm saying? Don't take my word for nothing. Don't ever take my word for anything. Do your own research. Remember the, uh, uh, remember the original movie Roots? And remember how Fiddler was kind of treated different than some of the other slaves on the plantation? And was actually given extra food and, 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 and more decent clothing and all of that kind of stuff. Why? Because Fiddler knew how to entertain Massa and Massa's guests with his fiddle. That's the reason why they called him Fiddler. He knew how to bring the entertainment. See, that's all we are. We, as far as they're concerned, we're only good for entertainment. You understand what I'm saying? And to do something to bring them some money. Do something to make them some money. Invent some stuff that they can hijack, that they can steal to make them some money. And to turn on each other. And to tell them what we got going on over here. Ain't nothing changed. In almost 300 years, ain't nothing changed. I'm talking about since the end of slavery. Ain't nothing changed. The reward may have changed. The way that they reward you now may have changed. But it's still a meritorious manumission. And you still have to do the same stuff to get it. Okay? 
So, uh, like I said, all of this information will be linked down in the description box. Uh, uh, you guys, please like this video. Please share this video. Have these conversations on and off of social media, like I've always said. Uh, um, hit that bell notification so you can be notified when we upload. Uh, 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 if you decide that you want to support the channel in whatever kind of way you want to support the channel, all of that information will be also in the description box as, as well as uh, uh, the GoFundMe that I have up now because I need a car, I need a job, I, I need some things, but whatever. It, it, it's, all of that will be down in the description box for y'all to decide. Please comment. Like I said, please share this um this video, please have these conversations among yourselves, with your family, with your friends, with people of like minds, and please understand what's going on. Please understand that nothing is going on that ain't already went on. There's nothing new under the sun. It's the same system. White supremacy has not changed. The faces may have changed. The packaging may have changed. The rewards may have changed. How they go about doing certain things may have changed a little bit. But white supremacy has not changed. It's still the same system. And understand that Sheila Jackson Lee is a part of that system. She wants to be a part of that power dynamic. So if they tell her to write a bill that kind of, sort of, almost looks like an anti-black hate crime bill, she going to do that. But it's not in no, in no way, shape, form, or fashion. Okay? So understand that. We just read it. We just broke it down. Go through. Read it yourself. Listen to this video over and over till you get it right. You understand? It's not. It's not. It's just another bunch of bullshit like HR 40. Okay? All right, y'all. I'll be back soon uh, 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 with another video where we talk about some more stuff that's going on. Uh, y'all, please keep your heads on swivel. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Stay safe. Be smart. Keep your power tools. Always keep your power tools at the ready. I'll try to remember to link some other videos uh, uh, in the description box that will uh, 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 give you you know more clarity and other perspe per uh, perspectives on this um, topic but y'all make sure you get down in that description box and read these articles and stay on code that's all I ask if you and if you ain't on code get on code all right all right y'all have a good one and I'll see y'all later